This is a demonstration of the reversible locking ratchet. You turn it clockwise and it will not turn counterclockwise, it locks. Then if you want to turn it counterclockwise, you throw the lever, it will turn counterclockwise, but it won't turn clockwise, it locks. This is an important feature on mainspring winders because when the spring is wound up, you can release your hands and work on the mainspring and the spring won't come unwound. A very important safety feature. This is a loop end mainspring that we're going to unwind. When the mainspring was in the clock, a clamp was put around it to contain the spring. We're going to take that clamp off and the spring will unwind. To do that, we put the adapter in the clamp. The purpose of the adapter is to bring the main spring out a little, give it some room to work. Tighten down the, the clamp. We select the proper let down chuck. Put the loop end into the little bar sticking out. Put the arbor into that hole in the adapter. Move the tailstock forward to engage. Tighten down the tailstock. With our glove, leather glove, we will commence the wind. The main spring is wound up far enough where we can move the clamp off. I took the gloves off for that. I'm going to put the gloves back on. Now we're going to unwind the mainspring. Guiding it with our gloved hand. Move the tailstock back. and remove the mainspring. The mainspring now can be inspected, cleaned, lubricated. Now we'll put it back, we'll get it ready, we'll put it back in the clamp, get it ready to put it back in the clock. Attach the loop end with a little bar. Then we'll have to put the clamp back over here. With a gloved hand guiding, we'll wind up the spring. I forgot to tighten down the tailstock, okay.
move the clamp over onto the spring. Now we are ready to unwind the mainspring. There we have it. The mainspring is wound up tight, the clamp is put on it. We loosen the tailstock, slide it backwards, and now this mainspring is ready to be put into a clock movement. That's all there is to it. This is a mainspring in a barrel. The cap has already been removed. We are going to remove this mainspring from the barrel so we can inspect it, clean it, and lubricate it. We have already selected the proper size sleeve. The gap in the sleeve is inserted over the crank facing the headstock. We've already selected the proper letdown chuck. Put this in the appropriate position. Put the mainspring in here and we'll tighten down the, cl the clamp using wing nuts speeds up the process on the clamp we're going to slide the tailstock forward engaging the chuck on the auger there we are we're going to lock down the tailstock and we're going to start cranking We can see the mainspring getting smaller. That should be just about there. We're going to slide the sleeve over the mainspring and we're going to turn it a little clockwise so we can have more of the mainspring tail sticking out through the gap. We are ready to unwind it and let the mainspring unwind into the sleeve. There we go. The mainspring is in the sleeve. We will move the tailstock back. Now with a slight twist of the barrel, of the sleeve rather, we should be able to remove the tail, the mainspring. And there it is. The mainspring is removed from the barrel. It's captured in the sleeve. You can see the tail of the mainspring sticking out through the gap. Now we are going to remove the mainspring from the sleeve so we can clean it, inspect it, and lubricate it. We need to take the barrel out and reverse it. The purpose of that is we want this hole so we can put the arbor into this hole. We put it back into the clamp Tighten it down, spinning the wing nuts. We put the arbor into the hole in the barrel. We engage the, uh, let me put the chuck in first. We engage the hole on the mainspring into the screw, push the tailstock forward, engaging the tailstock. We lock down the tailstock. For this operation I'm going to put my safety gloves, gloves on. I already have my safety glasses on and we will start winding winding the mainspring up so we can remove the sleeve. We can remove the sleeve. Now we are going to unwind the mainspring, guiding it with our gloved hand.
there you have the mainspring out of the sleeve, out of the barrel ready to be inspected, cleaned, lubricated, whatever. Okay, we have the mainspring out of the barrel. It's presumably already inspected, ready to go back into the barrel. On this piece of wood with the two screws to hold the mainspring, we have one higher and lower than the other. We're going to use the low screw to hold the mainspring. The reason for this is it allows more of a tail to extend through the sleeve, the gap in the sleeve, and also if you use the upper screw, the sleeve interferes, the screw interferes with the sleeve sliding between the screw and the mainspring. So, we'll put the mainspring in the arbor, wind up the mainspring. I'm going to stop here and put my gloves on just for safety sakes. I have my safety glasses on. I'm going to wind it up. Let me see if we have enough. We can. No, we still need to wind it up a little bit more. There we go. We can slide the sleeve over it. And I'll turn the sleeve just a little to have about an inch of the tail sticking out. We're going to unwind it into the sleeve. There we go. The mainspring is in the sleeve. Now it's ready to go back into the barrel. Insert the mainspring into the barrel. Engage the mainspring in the in the hook inside the barrel. We'll put this back inside the, the clamp. Tighten down the clamp. We'll slide the tailstock forward, engaging the arbor with the let down chuck. We don't need to put our safety gloves on because the spring is in the barrel. We will wind it so we can remove the, the barrel, I mean the sleeve. Okay, we remove the sleeve and now we'll unwind the mainspring into the barrel. There you have it. The mainspring is back in the barrel ready for the cat to be put back on and then subsequently put back into the clock.